The effects panel inside of Generate Blocks Pro is one of the most underrated features that it's definitely worth making the upgrade from the free version. In this video, I'm gonna go through it and show you exactly all the things that are inside of the effects panel. And to really get your mind going, I'm gonna show you a few common examples of how I use it. One thing that I've found out from people is they don't realize all the things that are packed inside of there. It looks a little inconspicuous, but once you dive in, it's amazing how many different things you can accomplish with this one little panel inside of Generate Blocks Pro. So let's go ahead and dive in and take a look. So the first thing we'll do here is just take a look through the effects panel. If you've not used Generate Blocks Pro before, then this might be new to you. And I just wanted to take you through everything that's here so you can kind of get a sense of what's going on. So over here on the right hand side, I am zoomed way in here just so you can see this easily. Inside the effects panel, we have six different options here. We have opacity and blend, transition, box shadow, text shadow, transform, and filter. So we'll take a look at each one of these. When you click the little wrench icon, you can add one of these effects. And here inside the opacity and blend, we have a few different options. We can target the device. So this depends on the breakpoint you want to affect, which is nice that you can narrow that down. So if you only want to do something on desktop or tablet or mobile, you do have that control here. You also have the state control, which is for normal or hover, which you'll see as we get into some of these demos, that becomes very useful. And then we have the target. So in here we can target whichever element you have. So in this case, I have a container selected. So the self is just the actual element. The inner container is the container that's nested inside of a container, which is kind of just how generate blocks works. When you put a container, there's kind of the outside container, then the inner container, the background image, or you can actually use a custom selector. So if there's something inside of this element, you could give it its own class and then target that class specifically. So here within inside the opacity and blend, the major control here is the opacity, which is just a slider here. And then you can choose the mix blend mode. So if you've ever used these inside of CSS before, or even inside of something like Photoshop, all that works very similarly. So we'll go ahead and delete that and move on to the next one, which is transition. When we click that, we have the same controls for device, for state and for target. And here we can actually put in our timing function. So you can do ease or ease in out or whatever timing function you can put inside this field. You can do all that here. Then you can target which property you want to use on this transition. So it defaults to all, but if you just wanted to transition the background color or whatever, you can put all that in here, just the same way it works when you're writing CSS. You can change the transition duration and you can change the delay. Inside the box shadow, we can hit add effect. Again, same controls for device, state, and target. And here you can set all of your box shadow settings. So we can have an inset if we'd like. Most of the time you won't use that. Here you can select the color. Of course, you have the full transparency here, the horizontal offset, the vertical offset, the blur, and the spread. So just like you'd write this in CSS, all of those effects are here for you. We'll delete that. Text shadow, very much the same. So you have the controls for the device, the state, the target. We can set the horizontal, vertical, or the blur on that. We'll go ahead and turn those off. Transform, if we add transform, we can choose what kind of transform we wanna do. We have the option for translate, rotate, skew, and scale. Again, all the device options, the state for normal and hover, and exactly what you wanna target. So when you select one of these, you get the corresponding options here. So depending on what you're selecting, you have a different set of options. Close that out. And lastly, we have filter. Inside the filter, we can choose blur, brightness, contrast, grayscale, hue rotate, invert, saturate, and sepia. Again, with the device controls, the state, and the target. So now that you have a better sense of all the effects that are in here, I'm gonna go through and show you a few that I use pretty regularly on builds so you can get an idea of how these are done. Now, now this video really isn't a step-by-step -step tutorial on these are the steps you need to take to do this specific thing. I'm just gonna use a few examples of things that I do pretty regularly because what I found with the effects panel is you're really only limited by your imagination. I know for a while I was doing some things the hard way. I was going out and writing CSS for these things when they were under my nose the whole time. I just didn't realize I could do all these things inside of the effects panel. So let's go through a few different options here so you can see what all kinds of things you can create just by using the effects inside Generate blocks. Okay, so the first one we're going to do is kind of a page hero design that I do pretty regularly. So we'll go in here and drop in a container. I'm going to go ahead and give this a lot of spacing just so we can see the effect a little bit better here on the screen. And we'll scroll down here to backgrounds. 
and we're gonna go ahead and choose an image for the background. So I'll grab one here that I already have loaded into my media library. And on top of that background, we're actually gonna use a gradient. So in here, we'll choose maybe a darker blue color for one of the colors of the gradient and change that opacity to 100%. And for the second color, we'll choose a bright pink color and change its opacity to 100%. Now it's important in this specific instance that we have the background set up as the pseudo element and the gradient set up as the element. This is gonna come into effect when we use the effects panel here. So right now you can't see this gradient on top of the image, but when we go in here to effects, that's where we're gonna see the magic happened. So what we're gonna do on this one is we're gonna turn on the opacity and blend. We'll go ahead and hit the wrench and hit add effect. And for here, we're gonna target this on all devices in the normal state, and we're gonna target the background image. So what we're gonna do in here is actually change the luminosity blend mode. And now you can see what this has done is stripped out all of the color of the image and overlaid this gradient on top of it. So we can use the opacity slider to control the opacity of the image. If we're gonna put text on top of it, we might need something pretty transparent like 0.2. We'll go ahead and hit close on that. And now you can see you have this nice little gradient effect on top of your image. You can go back in here into the direction and change the direction of it, and then add something like a big hero headline across the top where we might wanna do an H1, and we'll just put welcome. Change the color to white. And just like that, we have a pretty nice little hero section just based off of what you can do inside the effects panel. Next, we're gonna take a look at using a button. So these are some of the effects that I use pretty often. So I'll just go ahead and drop a button block in here and we'll just say, click me in the text. I'm gonna go ahead and change the color from this blue color on the background. Go ahead and copy that. And I'm gonna do just a slightly darker blue on hover. So now you can see when we hover over our button, it gets a little bit darker. Of course, this is a little boring and this is where the effects panel comes into play. So what we're gonna do here is turn on the transform. We'll hit the wrench and we'll hit add transform. For this, we're gonna do a translate and we're gonna do this on hover. Now what we wanna do is actually translate the Y by negative four pixels. And you can see now when we hover over our button, it jumps up slightly. Of course, this is a little jerky, so we need to add a transition on here. So we'll go to transition. And as you can see, you can stack these effects as many as you need. We'll hit the wrench icon, and we're gonna change this to about 0.3 seconds just to smooth this out a little bit. We can use the ease timing function or use ease in out, whatever your preference is. We'll hit close, and now you see when you hover over this, you have a slight subtle effect where the button lifts up. This works really well too in conjunction with a shadow. You could do a small shadow on it at its normal state and then a bigger shadow when you hover so it actually looks like it's lifting off the page. And all those things can be done here right inside the effects panel. Let's go ahead and look at another button one. I had told you that I was actually writing CSS for a lot of this before when I didn't realize everything that was here and this is one of those cases. I'm gonna go ahead and clear out the background colors on the button and I'm just gonna put in a dark color for the text and an even darker color here for when it hovers. I'm gonna go into the spacing and I'll probably leave a little bit of vertical spacing, but we're gonna clear out any of this left and right. And the idea here is this is going to look more like a text link. And what I'm gonna do is actually add an icon. So if you go to icons here, you have some general ones and some social ones. I've actually pulled a separate icon that I'm just gonna paste in here into the SVG HTML. And you can see now I have a little arrow next to my button. I actually wanna move this to the right hand side. And the effect I want is when you hover over this, I wanna actually move that arrow over to the right. So I wanna animate that slightly. Now you do have all the selectors in here where you could go write the CSS for this, but all of this is totally doable inside the effects panel. So we'll go in here and we'll go to transform and we'll hit add transform. And we're gonna choose translate. We're gonna do this on all devices. We're gonna do it when it's hover. And here we wanna target the icon, which is an option you have inside here now since you have the icon turned on. And what we're gonna do this time is translate the X. We'll do it by six pixels just so we can see it here. Hit close. And now when I hover over the button, you can see the icon moves over to the side. Again, that's a little jerky, so we're gonna to have to add some transition to this. We'll go in here and turn on the transition. We'll leave it as 
the device is all the state is normal and the target is going to be the icon. We can leave the ease on here and we'll change this to 0.3 seconds. So now when we hover over the button, we see the icon animates nice and smooth. This works great for any kind of text link like this, especially if you have some kind of arrow. Now where we can get into a lot of different things inside this effects panel is when you're building out some kind of cards. So what I'm gonna do here is just go ahead and drop in a container just to hold everything. I'll give it a little bit of padding just so we have some room to breathe. And inside of it, I'm gonna drop in a grid. We'll just do one column and I'll make this one column just 33%. In fact, I'll go here and just center this up so we have it right in the center of the screen. So if we're building out some kind of card, we're probably gonna want some kind of padding in here. We might want something like a headline and we might want some text underneath it. Now you can go in here, of course, you could give this card some kind of background color, but often what I'll wanna do on cards like this is just have a subtle shadow around it so you can see that it's separated from the background. So the effects panel has the box shadow section here, which works perfect for this. You can see as soon as we tick it on, you can see a bit of a shadow here, but we can go in and play with that all we'd like. So we'll leave the color where it's at, maybe change the horizontal offset to zero, and we'll change the blur to about 30. And as you can see here, we have a very subtle shadow behind this card. Now what you might wanna do is add an effect for when it hovers. So there's an add an effect button here, and this will just stack two different box shadows on it. So we're gonna leave this on all devices, but now we'll change it to hover. We'll go ahead and change that horizontal again to zero. Maybe we'll change the vertical to 15, and we'll change the blur to 40. So we'll go ahead and close that now. And as you can see, when we hover over the box, the shadow grows just slightly. So that gives some kind of indication that you're hovering over this element. And that's an effect that I use countless times on websites pretty much over and over again. But we can actually do a lot of really cool things with this effects panel. We'll go ahead and turn this box shadow off and we'll use the same card here for our design. I'll go ahead and pop open the list view here just so we can see exactly where we're at. So this first one I'm gonna show you is where we can use the effects panel to manipulate the image in the background of a card on hover. So what we'll need for that is just some kind of image inside this card. And since that text is hard to read, maybe we'll just give this a white background and drop the opacity of the image here. So now we can see we have this card with this image in the background. And what we're gonna to wanna to do is when we hover over this card, make the background image get bigger. So we can do that inside the effects panel by using the scale. So we'll go into effects here and we'll hit transform and we'll hit the wrench and add transform. And what we're gonna choose is scale. Now we'll leave this for all devices. We'll do it on hover. And what we're gonna target is the background image. So we could say something like 1.2, which might actually be pretty big, but just for demonstration purposes. Now when we hover over it, you can see the image in the background gets bigger. Again, it's pretty jerky, so we can add a transition in there and target the background image and drop this down to maybe 0.3 seconds. And now we have a smooth animation as you hover over this box. And there's all kinds of things you can do based on this same principle. Instead of scaling, we could go ahead and delete this one and we could do a filter. So we could do something like a blur. So we could go ahead and change this to background image is what we wanna target. And we can go ahead and blur this slightly now so you can't really see the image, but we'll add another filter and choose the blur again and choose the background image. And this time we'll choose the blur of zero and put the state on hover. So now when you hover over the image, it comes into focus. Now keep in mind, I still do have that transition turned on, so it's doing it nice and subtly. Now one of my favorite tricks on this is when you have just a little bit of text on here, we'll go ahead and make this a little bit smaller and maybe we'll grab this card and make the minimum height a little bit taller. We'll go in here to spacing and change the minimum height to 400. And on this container, we can align everything to the bottom. We'll go ahead and delete this blur here for now. And you can see we have this card where you can see the image in the background, the text on top of it. But one thing I like to do is use the transform here and we'll get to see how this works on inner container. So I'm gonna choose transform and I'm gonna add a transform and we're gonna choose translate on all devices and the state is gonna be normal 
and we're actually going to target the inner container. Now you have to do a little bit of guesswork here, but I'm going to guess somewhere around 100 pixels might do us. Let me click off of this and see. Uh, we can still see the text here. So we'll go ahead and edit that just a little bit by jumping back in here to the effects. Trans oh, not the transition, the transform. And we'll change this to maybe 105 pixels. And now our text is completely gone outside of this card. So all we see is the headline. Now what we want to do is when you hover over this, the text come back into view. So go in here again to effects in the transform. We'll add a transform. We'll choose translate. We'll put it on the hover state and we'll target the inner container and we'll move the translate Y back to zero pixels. Go ahead and close this, click off of that. And now you can see when we hover over the card, the animation makes it so the text comes back in. Now, of course, this is a little jerky as well. So we'll want to go back in here and make sure that our transition is actually targeting the inner container. We'll hit close. We'll click off of it again. And now when we hover, everything just slides into place. This is a really cool effect if you have several cards on a page and you don't want to overwhelm them with too much text. So as you can see, there's a whole lot of things you can do inside the Generate Blocks Pro effects panels. It's definitely one of the hidden gems inside of the software and something that's worth upgrading to the pro level plan for. Like I mentioned, I think mostly you're just limited by your imagination here. So it's fun to get in there, create a little sandbox page and just play with the effects panels to see what kinds of things you can come up with. All the hover cards I did, or the background image for the hero, or even the button animation, those are all things that I just figured out how to do with playing around with the effects panel. So I would suggest you get in there and get your hands dirty coming up with a few different designs. If you like this video, I have a couple other videos here going over different things inside of Generate Blocks that you might want to check out. We'll catch you on the next one.